coordinator. Um, so she does a lot of coordinating with volunteers and interns and runs a lot of programs and events um, and has a diverse uh, background in environmental education, also as a UNCW alum. Um, and we're super excited to have her joining us today. Uh, so to get started with that, would you like to tell us a little bit about your journey um, into sustainability and kind of your background in sustainability? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here um, and, and to talk about such um, subjects that are passionate to me. Um, so my journey in sustainability really began at a very young age um, through an earth science class that I had. Um, my sixth grade teacher really um, was, was an amazing, incredible teacher, inspired the whole classroom um, to really, uh, you know, become more involved um, in helping our planet. One of the ways was through uh, cleaning up debris. And so I grew up in Richmond, Virginia along the James River. And so she would take us out to the James River and clean up trash along the river and talk about the way, how, how it makes it its way down to the coast. Um, and that really is, is what sparked my passion and interest. Um, and from there, I met some marine biologists when I was traveling in Alaska and they really inspired me to study marine biology in college. And so I looked up some programs that were fairly close to home. UNC Wilmington ended up being one of them. They had a fantastic marine biology program only four hours away from me at the time. So I, I took a tour, loved campus, came to college and I was so excited. I really thought that I would go down the road of a researcher. I really wanted to get into research and I wanted to to um, go on to get my PhD and become a professor. Um, and it was actually through a couple different internship and volunteer experiences that I took during my college career that I really realized environmental education is where I wanted to go. Um, I took an internship with the Army Corps of Engineers after my freshman year of college. And I, it was through that internship as working an environmental educator, I ran a little nature center and I went out and spoke with uh, the community to educate them on the local flora and fauna. And I found so much fulfillment and satisfaction in that position. It was so much fun. Uh, and I really enjoyed that type of work. Uh, and then later on in my college career, I did an internship with uh, in a research lab. And I found that I really struggled with the coding and the statistical analysis. And I found um, that my strengths and skill set was not made up for this setting. And I have so much respect for those individuals that do um, because I certainly did not. Um, and so that really shifted where where I went and um, I really started to look at, you know, what, what issues mattered the most to me. One of them um, continued to being that pollution problem that first inspired me um, when I was 11 years old. And so I uh, heard about Plastic Ocean Project at the time. Um, I was in another club and we had Bonnie Monteleone come speak to us about um, the Plastic Ocean problem. And I was so inspired and so moved by that that I started volunteering with Plastic Ocean Project and I became the volunteer coordinator for a time. And it was actually through that position that I uh, became acquainted with one of the uh, Coastal Federation uh, employees. And she recommended me for this position when it opened up. Um, and so that volunteer uh, work is what got me here into this position today. Um, and so I'm really so appreciative and grateful for that time um, and my journey in sustainability as a whole. That is awesome. I love when people find their passions along the way. I feel like that's a big inspiration because a lot of us come into this like, oh my gosh, like what do yes. I do? Of course, oh. you have, exactly, yep. And it is about trying all different types of things to really find what you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you kind of already touched on this um, a little bit, but if you could expand why the Coastal Federation, like what 
drew you most to this organization and maybe some things you'd like to highlight about it? Absolutely. <clears throat> Working at the uh, North Carolina Coastal Federation is really a dream come true for me. I heard about the Coastal Federation while I was in college. Um, they had various different volunteer events that I would participate in. And um, what really impressed me was the scope of work that they were accomplishing. I was very used to um, small level projects, um, you know, very much at the local level. Uh, but what I was seeing with the Coastal Federation is they were doing these projects coastwide. And at, at that time, they were also in a very huge campaign called Stop Titan. So this was a concrete um, company that was going to come in here, set up shop in this factory that was going to contribute majorly to air pollution and water pollution. Uh, and they raised this, this massive campaign, uh, partnered with various organizations and government agencies um, to really take them down. Um, and so watching that all unfold, uh, I just thought that they were, um, you know, bigger than ever. And here they were actually able to, you know, step up to this major corporation and, and do something better for our coastal environment. Um, and, and so that was a major, major thing for me. And then right after college, um, while I was working and volunteering for Plastic Ocean Project, I was also working as a nanny full time. Um, you know, it was tough for me right out of college to find, um, you know, that a good paying job. So I did what I could, which was, you know, take a job that I enjoyed that paid well and spent the rest of my time, you know, doing what I was also very passionate about, um, you know, volunteering Plastic Ocean Project. And while I was a nanny, I used to take the boys to Touch Tank Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I took them to the Coastal Federation, and I would take them to their different cleanup events. Um, and again, I was a huge fan supporter of the Coastal Federation and the work they were doing with marine debris and saving our coastal environments for all these fun little critters that, you know, we would see at Touch Tank Tuesday. Um, and so, you know, that was, it was always a big dream come true. And so when I got the call um, to come interview, view, uh, it was a very surreal moment. That's so sweet. I love that you kind of like were bringing them to that and then now you're uh, in charge of that and so passionate about it. That's awesome. Yes. Um, and that's that's so fun that you were like in involved with them before even working there. Um, yes. This is something you also kind of touched on, but in an, maybe a little bit of an opposite <laughs> way. So uh, you mentioned that you took these more science classes and intern or internships in a lab and that you kind of learned that that was not what you wanted to do. So that's definitely something that it seems like has affected your career, but what are some things you've learned that uh, you have used a lot in your career now? I would say that, um, a lot of interpersonal skills that I picked up from my classes, working in group projects, working with a lab partner, those um, really transferred over to the career that I'm in now, being able to work with other people, a diverse um, array of you know, people, um, from the stakeholders that we work with to volunteers, members of the public. Um, it was really nice to be able to get that experience from my college um, courses. I would say a lot of, um, uh, a lot of knowledge I picked up and I still still use quite often um, are from my marine biology courses, my ichthyology courses and marine mammal courses. Um, for instance, we learned um, you know a lot about the um, you know, the sonar and everything within our marine mammals and then we deal dealt directly with seismic testing with our offshore oil um, advocacy work. And so knowing exactly why and how seismic testing was affecting these animals really helped me to communicate that in the public. So having that knowledge of why it matters and then the issues that are going on today, it really helps me as an educator, as a communicator, be able to explain to folks why we should care, um, you know, why it is affecting the animals um, and, and how it's affecting the animals. 
That was such an interesting twofold answer. I feel like we always think like classes, like what information did we learn? Right. It's like, how does this lab project also impact me? And right. something just we don't often think about. So thank you for bringing that to light. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> because there's sometimes that necessarily I might not have taken the material from that class and used it, but the experience of that class I have definitely used in, in my career um, moving forward. So kind of bouncing off of that, um, what are skills that you found you need in your position that you didn't necessarily learn in class, yes. whether it be just like from life or from other courses outside of class? Um, just things of that nature. I would say um, where I am right now as an educator and a communicator and I, the outreach work that I do, um, I really wish that I had learned more about communication uh, when I was in college. Um, I, you know, I, I got a strong science background and that's definitely a great foundation again to, to be able to understand these complex issues. Um, but now I wish I had learned um, how to articulate that necessarily to the general public, um, especially through writing. A lot of the writing that I did in college was scientific writing. We, we read a whole book on how to write scientifically. Um, and I rarely, in my job, of course, you know, every position is going to look different. In my position, I am trying to take that scientific writing and turn it into something that is very digestible for um, the, the common public. And so um, I wish that I had really, um, you know, gained some more skills in in writing and communication, uh, you know, related skills um, to, uh, I know that would have been beneficial to me now. Yeah, and I think that that's something that has been, I feel that everyone has kind of seen themselves struggling with is this communication aspect in the digital age when everything is so like online and virtual. And so it's, you have to be kind of that much more clear in what we're trying to articulate with each other and it can be difficult so I exactly. definitely understand that <laughs> exactly um, this is kind of a good segue is maybe um what's one piece of advice that you wish someone had told you and how do you think maybe in the in terms of communication or in terms of really just anything that could have helped you where you are now um I, I I'll say I have two two answers for this um one, one major piece of advice I wish that I had been told was that I didn't necessarily have to go to grad school. Um, again, this is so different for everyone. This is just my personal experience, but um, my personal experience going into college was that I had to go to grad school. That was not an option not to, that I wouldn't be able to do anything with marine biology if I didn't have a master's degree or if I didn't have a PhD. Um, and I did not go to grad school um, afterwards, and that wasn't necessarily planned, but it was always, you know, oh, I ha you know, I'm going to have to go to grad school, I'm going to have to go to grad school, um, you know, but when that time came, it was, you know, very, very expensive and not affordable at the time, um, but I've been able to come into a position that is wonderful in an organization that is great, that um, really offers a, a sustainable source of living, and so I wish I hadn't spent all that time stressing and worrying myself um, about something that I didn't necessarily need. Now, of course, it's, it's, hugely beneficial to those, especially those that really want to go to grad school. I encourage them to go to grad school. Um, but I, I wish I hadn't worried all of that time of, oh, I have to go to grad school. Um, you, you really can do um, you know, whatever you want to do, which is my second piece of advice is not to limit yourself and not to limit your dreams, manifest your destiny, um, you know, let yourself dream big. And I never thought that I would be able to combine all of my passions into one, um, those being science, education, and the film aspect. One thing that I got to do through this pandemic is when we moved um, from our in-person 
uh, educational opportunities to virtuals, I started making these educational videos. And photography was always a passion of mine, always a hobby, never anything I thought I would be doing professionally. And so when I was making these educational videos, I'm using film and photos that I've taken um, and the science that I know and wrapping it up into being something educational. It was so much fun. I loved it so much and I never thought I would be able to do that. Um, and so again, I wish that I, I hadn't limited my, my scope of thinking what I could do um, uh, so that I knew that you know these, these things can happen and uh, uh, you know, put, your, put your best foot forward. I feel so inspired. I thought was such a perfect answer. <laughs> I feel like I can do anything now. <laughs> you really can. You really can. And it might take longer than you, you'd like, um, but know that you will get there and be patient and be resilient. Just like we want our coast to be resilient, we want to be resilient ourselves and just uh, don't lose faith. And during those hard times, um, tell yourself that this too shall pass. That was one thing Maya knows. Ted, Ted Wilgus, our, our uh, coastal scientist at the Coastal Federation, that was a great piece of advice that he gave me is that when you do have those hard times, the, that this too shall pass. So I guess moving on to our last prepared question, I personally know that you have a lot of opportunities for UNCW students to get involved. Um, so could you just expand on where we can find those opportunities and what is entailed in the different positions available? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I highly encourage um, anyone interested uh, in becoming more involved to sign up as a volunteer on our website. Um, it's really easy. Just go to nccoast.org, get involved, volunteer, and you can sign up there um, to be notified of our different uh, upcoming volunteer events. Um, and again, you know, volunteering is how I got into this position. It's one of the best ways to network. Um, it really is all about who you know. Um, and when you can make those connections, um, it, it, it will make the world of difference. And volunteering is one of the best way to do that. Um, so even if it's not with our organization, I, I encourage you to seek out, you know, whatever organization speaks to you and get involved in that way. Um, but we definitely encourage uh, students to sign up to volunteer with us. Right now, our in-person uh, opportunities are limited. Um, we still do have uh, a lot of work that needs to be accomplished and it can be accomplished remotely. So we have volunteers that are working on projects with us remotely, um, but we're you know, hopeful that uh, Soon, at some point, we will be up and running, building living shorelines and uh, filling up oyster shell bags and cleaning up marine debris and would love to have you out there for those um, volunteer events. Um, we also have our student internship program. So we have this um, during the summer, spring and fall. Um, uh, right now, our summer internship positions are all uh, full at this time. Um, but we do accept um, interns in the fall and spring. So I encourage you to apply. All you have to do is um, email me at bonniem at nccoast.org, your resume and cover letter uh, to apply to those internships. Um, and so again, and of course, if anybody has any questions, you are more than welcome to contact me at any time. 